is Patrick actually reviewing NXT today? Well, I had time to watch it, so why don't we get started, shall we? Greetings, wrestling fans, and welcome back to the channel. I know, I'm actually reviewing NXT for a change. Why am I doing this all of a sudden? I don't know. I just felt like reviewing NXT Heatwave. I watched I watched it when I got home from university. I watched it when I got home from university. So So I just thought I'd give my thoughts. I just thought I'd give my thoughts. So be so be prepared. Be prepared, as would, as Scar would say from Lion King. But anyway, I know, I know, I know. You guys are stunned as I am. Maybe this will become a regular thing. Who knows? So we start. So we start off the show with Carmelo Hayes defending the North American Championship against Giovanni Vinick. I don't know why he wasn't brought up with Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser, by the way. I, I find that very confusing. So anyway, but before I continue on, I want everybody to understand that just because I may not watch NXT does not mean I don't know what's going on. Because I do tend to watch some of the clips on YouTube, so I am aware of some of the storylines. If I care enough, if I care enough. I, w I would, but but yes, I am letting you guys know I am I do casually watch it on YouTube, just so you guys are aware, so that way I, so that way you guys are aware, so that way I don't act like I don't know what's going on. But listen, I just want to say 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 this straight up. Carmelo Hayes, I'm not the biggest fan of this guy. But he is very, very talented. He is very talented. He, he has a lot of skill. He's got a lot of potential to be the future. I may not like this guy, but at least I've got the courtesy to say, hey, this guy's going to be around for many years. So, maybe eventually in due time, maybe in due time, maybe he will grow on me, but I just never understood the appeal of Carmelo Hayes. Giovanni Vinick, I've always been a fan of him, even when he was in Fabian, even when he was known as Fabian Ica in Imperium. It took me a while to get into Imperium, but you know I got into them in the end. But uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, Carmelo Hayes walked away with the W. We had Diamond Mind in a segment where they called where um they called out um. Roderick Strong for called out Roderick Strong for being a bad leader, and Roderick Strong said that he would lead Diamond Mind into a battle against the Usos if because he's that proud of them. Yeah, I highly doubt that. But but Diamond Mind were ready to attack Roderick Strong until the Gallus Boys attacked Diamond Mind. Now I may watch NXT casually. But I have, but I do not watch NXT UK. I do know these people are from NXT UK. I am aware of a few people from NXT UK. I only know maybe about a good handful of people from NXT UK. So don't get all upset at me if I don't know if I don't know these guys. But I am aware they're from NXT UK. These Gallus guys. I am very much aware that they are from NXT UK. I've got a feeling this is going to be leading to Roderick Strong either joining the Gallus boys. That's what I think. I think it's going to lead to Roderick Strong possibly joining Gallus. But I could be very wrong. Because may or maybe Roderick Strong will show his loyalty to Diamond Mine. But my final guess is that I think this is going to lead to Roderick Strong joining Gallus. And next we got a match that I was very much looking forward to. Possibly the only reason why I wanted to watch Heatwave. 
That was Cora J taking on Roxanne Perez. Two former friends going at it. So, and I feel these two are going to have a great rivalry. And I feel like this rivalry is going, going to continue after how the match ended. I do like Cora Jade's new gear. I do like her new weapon of choice. It's, it, 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 I actually find it funny that as a face, she, she runs around with a skateboard, but as a heel, she's got a lead pipe. Hey, it looks like a lead pipe. People, some people tell me it's a stick. It looks like a lead pipe. Okay, according to Dota.com, it's called it a kendo stick. Okay, well, I am wrong. It is a stick. I was just reading what um, Dota.com had to say, if I found it anywhere about the, about the weapon. It's a kendo stick. My apologies for calling it a baseball bat. It just looked like a baseball bat. But anyway, uh, they're trying to make it sound like Cora J cheated in this match, which, that's how it came off. Roxanne had the kendo stick... It's like a freaking baseball bat, I swear. But she had the kendo stick, and Roxanne was going to use it, but, but being the typical babyface, she didn't want to do it because, oh, she believes her that is still her best friend. Cora J then whacked her with a forearm, and then she grabbed Perez for a double arm DDT. Now, it says onto the kendo stick. It actually says... It says that she did it on the kendo stick. I actually watched the watched this match back several times, and I swear to God, it didn't even look like she even land, hit, hit her with the kendo stick. It looked like she didn't even do the finishing move on the kendo stick, but... They're trying to make it sound like she cheated, but from my point of view, it didn't even look like it at all, but... They say she, it landed, she landed on the kendo stick, but in my point of view, of my, my very good vision, it looked like Cora didn't even cheat, but hey, Cora Jade won. That's all that's important to me. That's all. That's all that's important to me. I'm happy she won because she she badly needed that win. She badly needed a win. October fifth, twenty twenty one. Cora Jade made her debut, and here we are on October sixteenth. October seventeenth here in Australia. Sixteenth. For you Americans. And Cora Jade finally won a match with her goddamn finisher. Now I know some of you are going to be saying, Oh, but Patrick, there was a few matches she won with a finishing move. Did don't, I remember at Spring Break and she did like a senton to, to uh, Dash Legend. And she also did a senton to Electra Lopez. She, won, she, she, did, she did have a finisher during that period. Yeah, but people told me her finishing move was this double arm DDT move. People told me her finishing move was a double arm DDT. Now some of you can say, well the Centon was her secondary finisher. Okay, maybe I would maybe I would agree with that. But I call this her first official win with her freaking finishing move. I'm sorry, I'm considering this the, her very first victory with her finishing move. Because people said her finishing move is a double arm DDT. And that's exactly what she did to win. So I'm classifying this as her first victory with her finishing move. Finally, I was very tired of her winning by roll-ups. It was either she would win by a roll-up or she'd just lose. So I'm glad she finally won with her actual finishing move. Now, keep it that way. No more roll-ups. Next, next, oh yeah, we had a few segments. We had a few segments with the, with the, we had a segment with the UK Tag Team Champions, Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen and Fallon Henley. You know, when I look at Brooks and Jensen, I immediately think of Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. If anybody remembers that, that tag team. If anybody remembers that tag team, Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch, when I see these two guys, I immediately think of Cade and Murdoch, the country bumpkin kind of character. 
Like, that's just what I think of whenever I see these guys. But I guess the only difference between them and Caden and Murdoch is that they didn't have a female as their ballet. Or ballad, as they call it. Well, I guess Fallon Henley's also a wrestler. But, you get the point. Tony D'Angelo and Santos Escobar had a match, and this one was... It was okay. I don't really see... I don't really see anything in this Tony D'Angelo guy. But he got the win over Santos Escobar, and there was stipulations in place. If Santo, Santos lost, he'd have to leave NXT. And if Santos won, he'd free Legado Del Fantasma from Tony D'Angelo. Tony D'Angelo got the win, so Santos Escobar will be going up to the main roster without the Legado guys. That's just... It's common knowledge. It's common sense. He's going to the main roster. That's It's common sense, guys. He's going to go to the main roster. What, where, where, where is he going to go? NXT UK? He's going to the main roster. So that's why he lost. Indy Harwell got a letter from an old friend, good old Dexter Loomis, sending her a letter. And we also got the arrival of Blair Devonport. Now, I am aware of who Blair Devonport is. And, for, and of course you guys may know I know who Blair Devonport is. If you guys are very active, if you guys watch my... Universe Mode live streams, you would know that I know who Blair Devonport is. So Blair Devonport is now on NXT, and, and her and Indy Harwell sounds very, very exciting. Even though I would rather it be someone else, because that just means poor old Indy Harwell is just going to get her butt kicked. I mean, why not Amari Miller? She deserve. Why not throw Amari Miller against Blair Devonport? She... She kind of deserves it after the shit she said about Sasha Banks. But oh well. Mandy Rose defended the NXT Women's title against Zoe Stark. Mandy Rose got the win. Thank you, Lord. I did not want this bum, Zoe Stark, winning the title. I'm sorry. I just do not like this Zoe. I do not like Zoe Stark. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just do not like her. She does nothing for me. And then our main event was Bron Breaker taking on JD from Ireland, 206. The real JD. The only JD that matters. Jordan Devlin. That's who he previously was known as, for those who were curious. But Bron Breaker would defeat JD from Ireland. And out came Tyler Bate. So it sounds like we're going to be getting an NXT UK and an NXT... Merger, and I find it very, I find that very ironic that we could be getting a unification. Funny how I didn't do that. Funny how I did that not too long ago in my universe mode live streams. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. But yeah, we're gonna be get. Looks like we're gonna be getting something involved between NXT and NXT UK. NXT UK is gonna be possibly merging with NXT, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't watch NXT UK, so. No complaints to me. Just get Ginny involved. Because I kind of want to see her. Anyway, that's going to be my NXT Heatwave review. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up. And if you guys do want to see more NXT reviews in the future, maybe I'll consider it. Hit the like, hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you all next time.